Another day with nothing to do. Ugh, I'm so bored. Maybe I'll take a walk. Hello, slaves. I mean, hey guys. How's it going? Any interesting research lately? Perfect. All right, guys, get to work. We'll go with this project. So what exactly is Save Our Ship 2? In a nutshell, it's an expensive RimWorld mod that builds on the vanilla game Ship Escape win condition. How much does it cost? I said expansive, as in massive, not pricey. Guards, send that guy to the meat grinder. Anyway, the mod, also abbreviated as Save Our Ship 2, turns the win condition into a fully-fledged space exploration mode with multiple features. In Save Our Ship 2, you can commandeer a ship with some of your colonists as you zoom around space and encounter friends and foes while also searching for new planets to explore. There's lots of stuff to be discovered out there, including ancient alien tech to give your colony a significant advantage. Hey, what's this? Beware of spiders. What's going on? Oh no. Run! As you've probably noticed, there are uh, two in the name. This mod is a major overhaul of the Save Our Ship 1 mod, and has some improved features while also adding new ones. One big improvement is that you don't need to start a new game to access the mod's features, just load it up and voila! The creator has also tried their best to integrate it with other mods, so it shouldn't have any major conflicts, though a modification this big might induce some bugs here and there. First up, let's take a look at how you can get started exploring the Save Our Ship 2 mod content. Before we begin, remember to like the video and subscribe to my channel so you can be updated on all the latest awesome vids I release. Oh yes, indeed. Save Our Ship 2's content is accessible at any time as long as you have a spaceship or the resources necessary to build one. Unlike the base game, ships in this mod are much easier to build and cost less too. All you need is a bridge, sensors, a shuttle bay, and chem fuel engines to launch your colonists into orbit. Alpha 10, you are cleared for takeoff. No, how could this happen? It's such a tragedy. All those resources lost. All my money and precious metals. Well, that just happened. It's fine. I have more expendable pawns. If you want to make the most out of your spacecraft, you'll eventually want to research other optional technology modules like cryosleep pods and weapon systems. I'll talk more about those later, though. Once you launch a ship, it plays a few roles. Firstly, the ship serves as a mostly rage-free place to store loot pawns that can fit in your planet-side colony. You can also use it as a resource sink as you expand the ship into a full-fledged space station with way more storage and utility capacity. Also, if you need to quickly visit any location on a planet, having a spaceship is highly useful. Most importantly, the mod introduces orbital quests, which require the ship as a launch point, and orbital quests mean more loot. While in the space, you'll need to manage your shields when under attack, energy, fuel, and heat to strike a balance and make sure your colonists survive the trip, just like the planet side colony in Vanilla Rimworld, except with a new spin on it. All right, now that you've launched your pawns into orbit, what you gonna do? They're not just there to admire the view, right? Thing is, you're not the only colony on a, or faction to explore space, no. The universe is a huge place and there's a lot of other ships out there too. Some may be traders peddling their wares peacefully and trying to survive. Maybe you'll find some good stuff to buy from them, or you can take it by force. Some are like us right now, shut away in our houses and refusing to communicate with anyone else. Some are even hostile. Oh, looks like you're in trouble. For these types of combat situations, you'll need ship weapons. Hmm, that guy seems pretty pissed off. I wonder why. You stole something. Who, me? I'm totally innocent. Anyway, before we continue, here's a quick reminder for the audience. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It's awesome, and there's lots of great content like this here, so don't miss out. Here, just to click on this button and... Oops, oh, my bad. Save Our Ship 2 features four different weapon types, each coming in three sizes small, large and gigantic, which affects a weapon's damage and overall stats. The four weapon categories are torpedoes, laser turrets, plasma turrets, and railgun turrets, which each category being most suitable for a specific range. Wait, range? Yep, you heard that right. Ship-to-ship -ship combat relies on a distance mechanic. On the right side of your screen, there's a distance gauge, which shows you how far or near your ship is from the enemy. Your ship will always be on the left side. Together with a flight direction, whether it's advancing or retreating, the range markers indicate distance for both your weapons as well as the enemies. Lasers are a close-range weapon, marked red, plasma weapons are medium range and marked green, and railguns are long range and marked blue. Railguns are technically usable at any range, but will lose accuracy the closer you are to an enemy. Torpedoes can also be fired regardless of range, but they're limited in supply, so don't go wasting them. 
On the distance bar, you can also see the enemy's flight direction. If you want to stop them from advancing or running, disable their engines. You can then slaughter them. I, am, I mean, negotiate for their surrender and their stuff. We surrender. Please spare us. We'll give you half our loot. I accept your surrender, but you're still gonna die anyway. That way I get even more loot. Ah! Note that weapons also produce a lot of heat and require power, and won't fire if either of these conditions are unsuitable. You can check your heat sink's capacity as well as the ship power reserves above the distance bar. To fire weapons, just click on your bridge, select the blue weapons button, force attack targets, and click on the part of the enemy ship you want to attack. You can also make ship-to-ship -ship weapons attack by selecting them individually and clicking force attack. Space combat isn't all about weapons. You also need defensive capabilities which can be either shields or point defense weapons. Shields are pretty straightforward and you can raise them by clicking on your bridge like you do for weapons and selecting enable shields. Just remember to watch out for your power usage. As for point defense weapons, contrary to the name, they aren't exactly offensive weapons. These are anti-projectile defenses which you can install on your ship to shoot down incoming projectiles like ray gun shells, torpedoes before they hit your ship. Their fire rate is limited, of course, so they can be overwhelmed. There are also spinal weapons, which aren't a specific weapon type per se, but more of an upgrade for capital ships that allows them to wield multi-part weapons. Alternatively, if you're some kind of hippie or pacifist, you can engage your thrusters and run from the enemy. But where's the fun in that? Live a little. Go ahead and raid those helpless civilian vessels and become a true space pirate. Now that we've talked about combat, let's take a look at some of your spaceship's other possible features that aren't about killing people. If you ask me, that's no fun. But hey. Firstly, the ship bridge, aka its command center. From here, your assigned ship pilot commands the ship and issues orders. It's also where researchers can discover new orbital quests. Earlier on, I mentioned the ship being a sort of storage point, the main way to ferry goods and colonists back and forth between your spaceship and the planet via shuttlecraft, which are miniature transport ships that can be reused, and they don't just work in space. You can repurpose them for ground transportation by setting them to hover mode. If you've ever watched sci-fi movies, I'm sure you know what life support is. If you don't, well, it's basically an oxygen generator. Nothing fancy, but obviously vital to keeping everyone alive. Do not let it get destroyed or shut down. Let me repeat, do not let this thing get destroyed. You got it? You got it? All right. Once you have a spaceship available and aim to tackle orbital quests, you'll also need EVA gear for your pawns, which provide portable life support. They'll need these suits to survive the vacuum of space, and the suits also come in handy in case your ship loses oxygen. EVA suits have two variants, the basic one, which only provides environmental protection and has no defense value, and the power armor, which is also usable in combat. But Newbert, you say, what about my beloved pet Mega Spider Bob? Can I bring him along on the space journey? Sure! In case you need to transport animals or colonists on long journeys through space, there's the Crito Sleep module. From Crito Sleep nest for storing eggs so you can repopulate animals quickly to quit asleep. For large and small animals to colonize cryopods, you won't need to worry about maintaining the needs of these passengers while in transit. Just make sure you have enough power to sustain the deep freeze. Whew, sorry, I had to take a quick nap. All that talking makes me tired, but you know what I'm not tired of? Hearing from you guys in the comments. If you got any feedback, suggestions, or even questions about this video, feel free to drop them below. I'll try my best to reply to everyone. And before we get back to the video, I'd like to call the action all you guys go and join the discord you join the discord i'm in there every now and then i try to be in there more often you can hang out with me and the crew and we can play games together so go on join the discord it's a great place link in the description link in the description link in the description yeah yeah that one the one you look click on it yeah you found it yeah that one now back to the video lastly ship ai upgrades each ship has an ai running it in addition to the human crew members which is capable of managing the ship's basic functions Welcome user Newbert. It does get boring after a while though with all its limitations, so if you're finding your AI lacking, you should seek out Architect upgrades. Architect is basically ancient alien technology that you can use to upgrade the AI and unlock really cool features. Unlockable tech ranges from psychic weapons to genetically modified and optimized animals. And if you manage to find enough architect to fully upgrade the AI, you can even evolve it into a fully fledged architect AI with highly improved capabilities. Give it a try. That's not all for the Save Our Ship 2 mod content. There's a lot more optional stuff to do with the spaceship. You can do more than just zoom around in space and slaughter everyone for shiny loot. You can also planet hop. In order to do so, your ship will need a capacitor array, which is a vital part of the Johnson Tonica drive that allows for hyperspace jumps. They're essentially huge batteries, so capacitor arrays can be used to power and, and other stuff stuff apart from the ship too, though it's not recommended due to the risk of short circuits. Just build the array, plug it into the ship's drive, and you're ready to go, assuming you got all the other resources prepared. So, what exactly happens when planet hopping? Think of it as starting a new RimWorld game, 
except within your current save file and with all your current resources, a bit like an adult going back to kindergarten, maybe. Your previous colony worlds are compressed and stored in the database, which means you can revisit them at any time and move back and forth between planets. When departing a planet, you can transfer colony ownership to an allied NPC faction. If you decide to return, it may even have become a thriving settlement of that faction in your absence. Makes sense, since you're not around to ruin their lives and torture them. Maybe the descendants of your original colonists will even feel grateful enough to give you gifts. Fun fact, scenarios aren't carried over between planets, so it's possible to change or swap out scenario parts when planet hopping. Scenarios are saved alongside worlds, so you can experiment with new things and new frontiers like the cowboys in the Wild West. Tired of living on the planet where every corpse explodes? Just leave! Things on that planet will still be explody when you decide to return. This means you can maintain multiple colonies across the galaxy, albeit not entirely under your control, except for a main colony. It's definitely worth checking out this mod and following its further development if you want a massive add-on to your RimWorld experience. There you have it, a brief guide to the Save Our Ship 2 RimWorld mod. It didn't go very in-depth on some of the features like ship types and weapon stats, but those are things you can discover of yourself in the mod anyway. And honestly, you should really give it a try. It's a great mod, especially for those of you who are bored with the base RimWorld content. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel. Feel free to leave your comments and feedback down below. Click on one of these videos, this one, that one too. Here's all the great Patreons that support the channel. See you next time. <gasps>